So, Dibbles, you know, back to answer some more goddamn questions. Questions we're going over today are around the video. Hold up here. It's totally okay to disagree with J-Dog. We're not brain-dead zombies. Yeah, all those fucking people getting all pissed off just because they don't agree with my opinion. Or that they think that I'm mad if they if they put their opinion and it's a different one. I mean, like, grown-ass adults, man, I don't give a fuck what you think. Uh, totally okay to agree. It was posted two weeks ago, 103 comments. See it here. Uh, very first one, Goatman. God that has a question mark. King Folly is a real one. His reaction to other bands is always hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, like that, uh, calls the Megadeth Boogie Woogie Riffs, <laughs> which, <laughs> what Boogie Woogie Riffs, I don't know, but no, that's pretty goddamn funny. Seeing him watch Imperial Triumphant live was hilarious. What do you think of Imperial Triumphant? Oh, I can imagine him watching that. Uh, I mean, it's not it's not my kind of music. I mean, if you even want to call it music for the most part. Um, I mean, they're doing something different. I'll give them that. Um, I'm not going to sit there dog, but it's, I mean, it's nothing I would ever listen to. Harry Quinn, thanks for getting me into Savage Master, brah. Stacy's vocals on the first album are absolutely killer, I think. Oh, so you checked them out just because I brought them up, huh? Sweet, brah, brah. If you haven't checked out the new Savage Master Devils, then go over and check it out because it's fucking great. Life Eternal, I was honestly surprised to hear you say that you didn't hate Mutilation entirely. The Vampires of Black Imperial Blood is a great record, so is Grimly Reborn. Does the raw black metal production ruin it for you? It's not the production, man. It's the songs. Telling you, it's the goddamn songs. Where are they at? Where are the riffs? Where's the memorability? Now, to their defense, when I first heard them, the way I first heard them was years ago when uh, Hell's got a bunch of, there was these slipcase CDs. They looked really, really nice, but I guess they're all bootlegs. We got them at the same time. I forget we got them from. Chase was the one that set up the trade. It was them, Vlad Tepes, and Moonblood. We got, like, a crazy quantity of them, too, because we got them to trade, like, maybe 30 to 50 copies of each. And the reason why I say it's a crazy quantity, because it was several titles. This is back when we were, we weren't living with our parents still, but it was the three of us just living together. So, very new still, right? I, I was still working a full-time job, to put in that perspective. So, I was in my early 20s. We got them in, and I had to case them up, and they had the cardboard slip case that went over the uh, plastic case. So, I was like, oh, dude, these are some nice-ass fucking bootlegs. This is when I heard Moonblood, Vlad Tepes, all at the same time. So, we got them, like I said, at the same time. Literally all of them by all three bands, all of them sold in like 24 hours or like 36 hours. Something crazy. It went up on a Friday and by Monday, Monday's mail going out, they're all sold out. I'm like, what the fuck? So I grabbed like one of each and I put it on. I'm like, this shit is fucking trash. Like, why is anyone even buying this? I've never even heard of this garbage. Keep in mind, this is, this is literally over. I heard of it. It's a lot mutilation. Let me clarify. This was literally 20 fucking years ago. So, no, the time I didn't. And um, put it on. I'm like, this is absolute fucking unlistenable garbage. Like, well, well, I don't even what, what the fuck. Why is this selling? That was my first introduction. The raw black model selling. But yet nobody buys that. It just doesn't make any goddamn sense. Um, but I went back and I listened to it. Might have been Grimly Reborn. I don't think it was Vampires. I know it's exactly what Vampires looks like. Because it's been bootlegged a couple more times since that time that we, we've had it. It's been put out officially. And um, so I pulled it a million and one fucking times. I just... Not sure if I went back and listened to that one, but I think it was Grimly Reborn I put on. And I'm like, I don't like it, but it's still, it's better than I remember. I'll give them that. And uh, I listened to a, another Moonblood as well uh, with um, Iron Bonehead uh, reissuing all that stuff. I don't remember which one I went back and listened to. The same thing. I was like, this is definitely, especially Moonblood, this is much better than I remember it. So maybe I should listen to some other Moonblood. I think it was maybe Taste Our German Steel was the one that I uh, went back and checked out. I was like, okay, I can at least see why somebody likes this. This is not completely unlistenable. Um, Vlad Tepes, I've still yet to hear anything that I can stomach. I'm like, this is just unlistenable garbage. Um, but the mutilation, the thing is, is like, it was better, but I'm like, still, I'm like, these songs are like, just where, it's, where are the songs? I just, I, just don't, I just don't get it. I mean, I, again, it was better than I remember. It, it was better than Krieg. I'll give him that. I haven't gone back and listened to Krieg in over 20 years, too. But I mean, it has nothing to do with it. It could be as raw as fuck. I, I, fuck hell, I like the Nunslaughter Rotting Christ demo. I don't get any more fucking raw, raw than that. It's, it has nothing to do with the sound. It's like, where are the fucking songs? It's, it's got to be catchy, good fucking music. You know what I mean? This tough guy black metal shit was just a screechy guitar and screechy vocals with not a goddamn riff in the world. Why, why, that's just stupid. It has nothing to do with I'm anti black metal. No, no. It's got it's to gotta be fucking songs, though. Like, it, I, I just thought that was common sense. Now, maybe they do, and again, I haven't gone back and listened to it, I'm, I missed out or haven't listened to something I would like. It's possible, I'm just saying, from what I heard, 
That was the reason I didn't like it. Got a taunter. Love Savage Master. Bought the Witch Cross from Hell's Head Bangers a few years back. The vocals sounded a lot better than they did on er did early on with Savage Master. Could you please do a video on Demonic Christ and your opinion on the Hoffman Brothers band Amon? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, Hoffman Brands Brothers Am band Amon. I uh, heard it. It was like yeah, just generic death metal. Didn't care. Listened to it once when it first came out. Actually, I don't think I listened to the whole thing because uh, when it came out, I believe they self released it and they were literally selling the CDs for thirty dollars. I'm like, what the fuck? Who sells a CD for thirty dollars? So we never got them in hells or nothing. But I think I did YouTube it. I'm just like. It, it reminded me of a band like maybe like Diabolic or something like that. And I do like Diabolic, um, at least the first. But the demo was fucking great. City of the Dead, Supreme Evil, and uh, uh, Subterranean Magnitude. And uh, the first three full links in the demo. And after that, when they went to, uh, they did an album like Death Gasm or something. I'm like, well, like, I remember not liking it. Anyways, uh, Avon kind of reminded me of something like that. I'm just like, just generic death metal, like that. It's like nothing there. It's like, it let down. I mean, it didn't suck, but it was like, there's nothing I would buy. Uh, but I only heard a couple songs on YouTube. I was like, I, I get where this is going. I, don't, I just don't care. Uh, Demonic Christ. Uh, funny you bring them up, actually, because uh, I actually recently sent Chase an email waiting to hear back. I told him, um, I, I have this idea for uh, Hells. I've had it for a long time. I just didn't know go through it. So I want to do like this demo, like a demo series on 7-inch vinyl. Or it could technically be... Uh, 10 inch or 12 inch if it's too long, but a demo series, right? Where it's just literally the demo. We kind of already started in a sense that we did the gouge seven inch, um, which was just their demo on seven inch. Cause I loved release like that. That was like my favorite shit coming out at the time. Like, you know what I mean? Lots of bands that did it. Like Gorephobia is always the first band that pops in my mind. Morbidious Pathology. But anyway, so I've been talking to Chase about this demo uh, series seven inches I want to been doing and the caustic phlegm. So I told you about the guys then. Like, um, they said yes. So do that on 7-inch. I want to do the Spider demo, um, the band Spider that we did their album. Ask them to do their demo on 7-inch. Chase said he asked me, so they said yes. So anyways, with the same series, I asked, I emailed Chase very, very recently uh, about doing Demonic Christ, uh, the Deceiving the Heavens 93 demo, the first demo, which is my favorite thing, the things I think is best. I'll do that on a 7-inch vinyl as well. Um, so... Yeah, I guess we'll see, because he's the one that's talking, because I'll say this about the Modic Christ, is it's like, uh, remember when I told you about the fucking um, dealing with bands, and it's like, oh, yeah, don't have materials, or they don't reply, or uh, or just whatever the case may be, the release doesn't happen. Well, I mean, they're the kings, or in their case, I guess the queens, of fucking, uh, where the fuck's it at, bro? Like, well, I guess we were supposed to do the new album or whatever? I mean, this has been going on for... Holy fuck, I don't want to say 10 years, but well over five. And unless Chase got something recently or within six months or a year ago, just hasn't brought it up. I've never heard anything. I've had people ask me all the time, even now, every now and then, uh, email, what's going on with, the, what's going on with the Mount of Christ? I have no fucking idea. Cause I never, I've never met Dana. At least I don't think I have. If I have, I, I didn't really, I wasn't aware it was her. Cause I know she was in Ohio at one point and maybe, maybe Pittsburgh, but not too far away from where we live. So her, her being in a Cleveland show at the same time I was is definitely not in the realm of possibility. So maybe I met her. But um, she was always in contact with Chase for us working with him. And I'm like, the, I mean, I remember when it was mentioned, yeah, we're doing the new Demonic Christ. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I don't even remember what year that was. Years ago. But it's like, where the fuck is it, man? Like, like how long does it take? Like, like, for, like it's another one. Again, it's not just them. There's tons of people, but... So the kings, they're the fucking queens of it. So that's my opinion on them. I think the, uh, the demo is the best. That's my favorite thing. Hope we can do a 7-inch. Hope it doesn't take 10 years to get materials for that, for fuck's sakes. Um, a new album, what the fuck are you guys doing? Straight up, what the fuck are you doing? Doesn't take that long. It started off every fucking goddamn uh, one line. Pretty much had some question marks. I don't see any. Uh... The lurking fear. Sup, J Dog. What are your thoughts on Bloodstorm? I know you're not huge in the uh, U.S. black metal, and I kind of agree with you for the most part. But I definitely think that Bloodstorm is worthwhile. I listened to their newest album recently. It was pleasantly surprised. Solid, memorable riffs. 
throughout with some punk influences here and there. Yeah, the first album, I don't even know if I've ever officially picked that up. It's the one with the tutti fruity fucking kind of like He-Man looking cover. Um, What's it called? Maybe Storm Wizards or something. I remember being a pretty good album. And actually, uh, if I wouldn't mind like owning an LP of it. I don't think it's, uh, fuck, actually, maybe Hell should even talk about that. Hell's do an LP of it. Has it ever been on vinyl? I mean, I've never seen it. I've only seen CDs of it. I think that's the, oh, I, I know, I think I listened to another one and I'm like, eh, first album's best, but it's Chris, with Chris Gamble um, from Agoraphobia. And for the whole time, part of it was kind of like, ah, this is pretty, this is pretty good U.S. black metal. I was like, well, I wish he would just do Agoraphobia instead, but there's always that old saying, be careful what you wish for, right? Because I got what I wished for when Agoraphobia came back and they did their first debut album. I'm like, this fucking sucks. I was like, this doesn't even sound like Agoraphobia. Um, so there was that. Um, but yeah, I, what is, maybe it's Pestilence something. I know exactly what the cover looks like. It literally looks like fucking Masters of the Universe, like the 70s cartoon type shit. Um, go back and listen to it. And hell, if it, an LP doesn't exist, maybe I'll throw that fucking idea. Hell should do an LP. I mean, I'm not saying one doesn't exist. I'm just thinking, I don't think I've ever personally seen one. And I'd be, that'd be cool. That'd be a cool fucking ass title to have on, uh, if one came through, say like nice, nice colored vinyl or something, the first Bloodstorm came through, I, I would, I would buy that for my collection. 100% for sure. No doubt about it. Ryan and Zerta 2, Jadizzle, question. On the subject of revisiting albums that sucked at first, but not bad second time around, Coffins. <laughs> Got something to say about them. That's actually hilarious you bring them up. Are you a Coffins fan? I thought it was Snooze Fest Central listening to years back, but now listening, I'm into it. Solid old school death metal. Cheers. It's hilarious you fucking say that. My exact opinion about Coffins was what you just said. Snooze Fest Central. And then we got the... um opportunity to put out them with a uh, depression the split we did a split 12 inch and a cd i think we even did cassettes too since it might be sold out now but a cd and a 12 inch the two vinyls are sold out i think we have some cds left anyways i thought yeah you know two respectable bands fuck yeah let's put it out and um when it came out and i listened to it i wasn't even a huge depression fan too not that i thought their stuff stinks i just think that uh, i was another grindcore band putting them with a gothic lease and stuff like that that just all kind of blurred together Gothically, phobia, and I like stuff by all those bands. And like, just it's, I was like, it's good sound and grindcore that just kind of blurs together. Like, it's, I can't really distinguish it all apart. But every time I put some some of it on, I'm entertained. The split, though, I put that on. I'm like, this is the fucking greatest thing ever. I was like, both both bands. I mean, there's all their songs and the sound of the whole thing was just awesome. I, I thought I think it's a very very awesome release, and it has nothing to do because we put it out. I, trust me, if I didn't like it, I thought it was mediocre. I'd fucking tell you straight to your face. I don't give a shit. Um, straight up tell you, it's not for me. Maybe it'll be your favorite band, but I thought that split was fucking phenomenal. So, um, and I was pleasantly surprised. I'm like, oh, Depression was a band kind of like, yeah, they're just whatever, background grindcore. And Coffins, I remember being Snooze Fest Central. And I was like full blown, blown away by both, uh, both sides. So then we had, um, other stuff in Coffins in stock. And I went and listened to some of their other stuff that was in the shelf. And my official conclusion on Coffins is, they have some really, really good songs. We're like, damn, this song is super fucking good, catchy as fuck, memorable. Uh, really thoroughly enjoyed, even on the first listen. Then they got some songs. We're like, man, this song's boring as shit. They're pulling the goddamn autopsy, mental funeral, man. Boring as fucking piss. Nothing there. And then they got some tracks that reminds me of like the ba the punk band Balzac from Japan. Not because they sound anything like it, not not whatsoever. Because Balzac from Japan, there's kind of like a punk. There's kind of like a poppy. Poppy, punk, misfits worship, but a little bit more poppy. And I like songs by them, right? And, but you would get, you, I basically, you can't own a full album by them because they have tracks where you're like, what the fuck is this? This is gay as hell. Like, why is this even on there? Like, it's like, like stupid samples and stupid shit, right? That Coffins was doing the same thing. There was tracks on something. I'm like, why, like, why would you even think this is a good idea to put on there? This is just dumb. Like, this isn't like, oh, this just isn't for me. This is literally, there's no way any death metal or singing. That, that was a good track. You know what I mean? So they had kind of like three things and you didn't know what you're going to get. It's fucking, you get dealt a fucking hand. What are you going to get? Get a good, good track? Are you going to get a fucking snoo snoozer? Or are you going to get a, what the fuck is this track? That was my conclusion on Coffins. Luckily, the split we did, I think each band did three songs or one band did four songs, one band three, three songs. Anyways, uh, all the tracks were super fucking killer. So, um, but they have other good songs. It's just what I noticed. I think I listened to two other CDs, the ones that were in stock. I think Barry Death was one that I listened to. 
And uh, both of them had that. Either snooze songs and a couple, like, why is this? What the fuck is this even doing on there? So that's my opinion on coffins. Death Metal Dero, J Dog, what are your thoughts on the German thrash band Division Speed? In my opinion, their debut is one of the best metal albums from the 2010s. Uh, I've actually never listened to it, to be honest with you. I've seen it. Probably came from the shop, or maybe I stumbled across it on whatever, in the rec you know, looking through records, but more than likely came to the shop. But I've, if I've listened to it, I don't remember. Uh, actually, I know we've had it in stock. I know for a fact. Actually, I can picture one of the covers now. Uh, I don't know if it was the first album, like you said. What's one's the debut? Um, I never listened to them, to be honest with you. Angel Marquez. Loving the videos, man. I'd love to hear your take on gore noise. <laughs> I mean, what do you consider gore uh, gore noise? Like uh, bands like Gore Beyond Necropsy and shit like that? I mean, it, 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 to me, it's just dumb. Like, I don't have a problem with it or anything. I just think it's, what, what's the point? This is just stupid. If that's what you're referring to, I'm assuming that's what you mean by gore noise. And if not, uh, I have a pretty decent idea what you're talking about or what you may be referring to. and even that I don't like. Juan Romero, hey J Dog question. Did you hear about Incantation, Incantation's compilation album releasing soon? I sure did. Will you be picking it up? I know it has these of the cloth on it, so you might disapprove of that. I, no, when it's a compilation album and it's years and years later, and they put some 7-inch on there, like we did the Destroyer 666s, uh, to the Devil is Dude, actually you're supposed to repress that too. Then it's kind of just like the Nunslaughter Devil's Countries, because it's not like the very next year, and it's like, oh, here, it was like 20 years later. And it's coming out as a full length, like all their stuff compiled as one. So you can just listen. So I get that. Um, the incantation, I'll check it out. We'll definitely get it in. Cause, I mean, especially because we uh, we work with incantation, so we, everything by incantation comes to us. Um, if it's a cool release, I'll pick it up. If it's got just a bunch of just random dumb tracks on there, which I don't, I wouldn't think that it would. Uh, but if it does, then probably not. But if it's got cool shit, I heard that it's got uh, tracks by Will Romer, but not the first demo. There was a 96 demo when Will came back. I have a bootleg version of it. There's a 96 um, live set on like side A or B with Will singing. And then it was the demo for um, right before Diabolical Conquest and Will sing on that. And I love that shit. And then my favorite thing by Incantation though is the Entrapment of Evil 7-inch with... Um, Will sing him is on that as well. Uh, my favorite album is on Word of Gotha, but uh, if it's got that Will shit on there too, more than likely I would definitely pick it up. Uh, Decor H, hey J Dog, I gotta disagree with you on Gate Creeper, dude. Obviously, they're nowhere close to this member in terms of death metal, but they're catchy as shit. Question, what would be the worst thing to happen to death metal or its scene? Oh, as far as Gate Creeper, they very well might be. I just, they were a band. I didn't get much of a chance. I only split with Exhumed. Um, just because uh, when I heard them, I heard them live. They opened up for Exhumed. I'm like, oh, well, cool. I mean, I was I was entertained. I was like, but it sounded like Swedish death metal. And I think I did put on one of the full lengths on in the shop when we got our stock in for Relapse. And I just didn't give them much, much attention. I was like, it's just another Swedish band. It's like, it didn't hit me right out of the buck and ballpark first time. So I was like, they don't get really a second or third. Maybe I go back to them. like, oh, shit, this is extremely good. That's that's very, very possible. Uh, but they were just another band that entered my mind because it was a, you know, 20, you know, band a few years ago. That's another Swedish me death metal band. And there's a million of those. So yeah, they're blowing up in popularity. So they're just a good example to use. But I didn't think they suck or anything by, by, by any means or anything like that. What was your goddamn question? What would be the worst thing to happen to death metal or scene? The worst thing? Uh, shit. I mean, I think we've already had the goddamn worst thing. Uh, just all the fucking fakes and just just, just let, let the floodgates open. Let anybody in. Uh, that shit's fucking annoying. And then you get the deer and headlights fucking idiots. What are we talking about, dude? You know? We bring it up like... What? Dude, you guys never would have fucking lasted in the late 80s, early 90s. Not that I was even in the scene at the time, but goddamn, I fucking understood it. Um, 
King Folly fucking punching the guy. For, knock the guy out for, when he opened up the door for wearing a sweater. That's what you get for wearing a sweater to death bash. That's what it was like back in the fucking old days, even before my time. It was like, yeah, it is. I mean, grand, that's a bit excessive. <laughs> but I get the fucking mentality. Now it's just bring your mom. Wear, wear a pink t-shirt. Fucking whatever. Just to show on up. Anybody in? You know what I mean? That, that crap is supposed to be a niche thing. It's supposed to be kind of like, I don't want to call it a cult, but it's it kind of like for members only. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, like, it's just all these just wankers fucking in and out. It's kind of like, it's a scene that kind of get a, to escape fucking reality. You know, if you go to a show or something like that, at least not anymore, it's not like this whatsoever anymore, but back in the fucking day, you, you were kind of like in a club to where you can escape the outside world of fucking dickheads and fucking fakes that you have to deal with on a daily basis, whether it be at school, your job, and you're around these like-minded people, not just because you like the same music, but you seem to have like-minded ideas just in, in life in general, whether it been fucking anti-religion or anti-politics or whatever, um, similar life, to, like whether you've been into Satanism, whatever, you know what I mean? It's just you had similar fucking views and shit in this death metal community. Now it's just any Tom, Dick, and Harry fucking Henny, Ham, and Ager just come the fuck on in. So it's like, it's not a club anymore. It's just like you're going out, going to Walmart. So I don't know, I'm bumping into any other stranger. So again, it's not like it's some cult I should, like that I want to say. It's more like a club where it used to be. Or members only. Like if you're truly into this, you're into heavy shit, and you're not going to be out of it in five years. Uh, like some guys we know selling off their collections and fucking getting out of it. It's like, dude, you just got into this fucking like five years ago when I fucking first met you. No names mentioned. It's easy to figure out who the fuck it is, though. Like, give me a fucking break. Like, what are you doing? New Year poser from day one. Uh, just stupid shit like that. It's like, just, you know what I mean? So I think the worst has already fucking happened. And it's only going to get fucking worse. And part of it is because of social media, YouTube, things like that. It's easy. Like literally a five-year-old can, can accidentally stumble across a death metal demo or album or whatever. Because by typing the wrong thing, the algorithm and all this other bullshit, like literally a five-year-old can. Anyone just if you have access to the computer. So it's much easier access for fucking canoes. And it's... It, I mean, the good that'll come from it is you'll get somebody like that maybe at eight years old, they hear it and change their life and they're in it till they're to the day they die to be, to be 75 years old. And they're into it today. The like, okay, that's great. It, it, it'll attract and bring in some true fucking new devils that really are passionate about it. Like myself and I love it to the day they die, but it's going to 90% is it's going to be a bunch of fuck tards that got no business being in this fucking scene. You know what I mean? They'll, and they'll just be out of it within five to ten years. It's worth seeing it a million times. More times than I count. So that's the worst. At least hopefully it doesn't get any worse. <laughs> but in my mind, the worst has already happened. So just ride it all from out of here and not out, right? It's just, just, just keep on just doing the same old, same old. Anyways, that's it for this one, Dills. See you in the next one. Comments, questions, concerns? Put it in there, and I'll see you tomorrow. Later, goddammit.